Hi everyone. In this video, I am going to introduce you to the adjusted trial balance, which is the second of our three trial balances. So the adjusted trial balance is the sixth step of our recording process. And the only thing that separates the adjusted trial balance from the first trial balance or the unadjusted trial balance is now we have performed adjusting journal entries. So you take your original trial balance, you determine what adjustments are needed, you make adjusting journal entries, and then you reproduce the trial balance, including the effects of those adjusting entries. And that gives you the adjusted trial balance. The main purpose of this is to ensure that our debits and credits still equal each other by the time we're done our adjusting entry. And I guess I said that's the main purpose, but that's not really the main purpose. That's one of the purposes. But the main purpose, arguably, is this is the document that we will then use to prepare our main financial statements. All right, so let's take a look. Here I have an example of a regular trial balance. So this would have happened in, in what I call step four of the accounting cycle. We have the trial balance. Notice a list of accounts. Debits equal credits. On the right over here, I have three journal entries. And specifically, these are adjusting journal entries. They're done on the last day of the month. And if you notice, these journal entries, we have accounts receivable and service revenue. So this indicates that we had some unbilled services that we went ahead and booked the revenue for. We recorded depreciation on a vehicle that we have that depreciates over time. And we recorded some salaries expense. So we must have had some workers that worked during the few final days of the period. They haven't been paid yet. We wanted to make sure we got that expense in the right period. So three adjusting entries. Notice on these adjusting entries, some accounts used already existed in the trial balance. For instance, accounts receivable and service revenue. We already have accounts receivable sitting here. We already have service revenue sitting here. So for these accounts, the new activity is just going to tag on to the existing balances. Notice for some of these others though, depreciation expense, accumulated depreciation, salaries expense, and salaries payable, none of those show up on our original trial balance. So we are going to have to start new ledgers to track their information and then add them into our trial balance. So here we go. Once we make our adjusting journal entry, so I showed you three adjusting journal entries on the last slide, we have to post those journal entries the same way we would post any other journal entry. So like I said, for the new accounts, like depreciation expense or salaries expense, those didn't exist on the trial balance, so we didn't have balances in those accounts. So we're just going to go ahead and create their ledgers, and we're going to add a line in for those adjusting entries on those ledgers. For accounts like accounts receivable or service revenue, we already had a balance. So notice I have in here, here was the previous balance, and then we're going to tag on that next entry, that new journal entry. We're going to post it to the ledger, and then we're going to get a new running total. And we do the same thing down here with service revenue. Here's the previous balance. February 28th, we had activity, the, the adjusting journal entry. Tag that on, give us a new running balance. Once we've done that, we tally up all of the new balances in our ledgers, and we are going to produce the adjusted trial balance. Now here, I show you the original trial balance for comparison. Here is your adjusted trial balance. Notice anything in black didn't change. Nothing in black was involved in the adjusting journal entries. And if it's not involved in the adjusting journal entries, it will not look any different in the adjusted trial balance than what it did in the original trial balance. The only thing that changes is anything that was involved in an adjusting journal entry, such as accounts receivable and service revenue, my red ones. Those existed on the original trial balance, but if you notice, their balances have now been updated to reflect the addition of the adjusting entries. And you have the purple ones as well. Notice the purple ones, those didn't even exist in the original trial balance, but now we have slid them in where they belong on our adjusted trial balance because now we have activity in those accounts. Finally, just like with the regular trial balance, you total your debits and credits and make sure they're equal. You are gonna total your debits and credits on your adjusted trial balance to make sure they are equal as well. Once you have all of this, you are going to use your adjusted trial balance to prepare your financial statements. Now, 
Remember, the trial balance collects all the ending balances in all of your ledgers. The adjusted trial balance simply updates those ending balances for any adjusting journal entries that get made. At this point, you have captured all economic activity of the entity during the period. So you're going to take all of your assets, you're going to take all of your liabilities, you're going to take your equity, and you're going to dump that on the balance sheet. You're going to take your revenues, and you're going to take your expenses, and you're going to dump those on the income statement. The only thing that you are not going to throw directly on the income statement or balance sheet from the adjusted trial balance, and I don't have it in this one, but for your own knowledge, the only thing that won't go directly on the income statement or balance sheet is if you have retained earnings. Retained earnings actually shows the beginning balance on an adjusted trial balance. Okay, so beginning. Retained earnings will not update till in, to an ending balance until we get to our third balance sheet, known as the post, uh, the, until we get to our third trial balance, known as the post-close trial balance. So until we get there, retained earnings is going to continue to show the beginning balance in the account. We're going to have to dump that on our statement of shareholders' equity and calculate ending retained earnings on the statement of shareholders' equity, take that ending retained earnings and plug that into the balance sheet. So I just want to point that out because it's one exception. Every balance on here is an ending balance, except if you have retained earnings. Retained earnings is a beginning balance, so it will not go directly on the income statement or balance sheet. It will go into the statement of shareholders equity as part of the retained earnings calculation. From there, you will find the end balance that will go on the balance sheet. Preparing the financial statements is going to be the seventh step of the accounting cycle. All right, that is it for the adjusted trial balance. We are seven of nine steps through the accounting cycle at this point, right? Adjusted trial balance was step six. You take all those numbers, dump them into your financials. That's step seven. We still have a couple of steps to go. The closing journal entries and then the final trial balance, post-close trial balance, which I will cover in other videos. I hope you found this helpful and I hope you have a great day.